Good morning and welcome to St. Thomas Church. Today is the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. These announcements. Monday will be session two of our conversation and discussion about the book Hope in the Holler. Uh, if you weren't with us last week and want to be with us this week, please do come. Uh, we had a good conversation last week and I look forward to our conversation tomorrow evening. That's tomorrow at seven o'clock for one hour from seven to eight on Zoom. The invitation to the, the discussion will be sent out tomorrow morning. So look for the invitation tomorrow morning in your email, the Zoom invitation to the seven o'clock discussion of Hope in the Holler. An update on our pledging for the coming year. Uh, as of the vestry meeting on Wednesday, we had $92,180 of pledges in the form of 27, 28 pledges, which is a gain of one over this year. And there are 10 people who pledged for this year that we've not heard from from next year. And we anticipate hearing from them. So we're in very good shape right now. Uh, thank you to all who have pledged. Um, if you've not pledged, I encourage you to do so. Um, you may do it on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, an annual basis, however it suits you. Um, this year's budget, we raised $129,000 or we had a budget of 129,000 and we're we're aiming or hoping for that again for next year at least. So thank you so far and um, I will continue to update you in due course. Also a couple of notes from the diocese. If you haven't please go online to the diocesan website and if you Google in um, Diocese of North Carolina, it will come up. And go to communications and click on communications and then it'll have a place that says subscribe to please note. And if you click on that and subscribe, there's no fee, it's just a matter of getting on the email list. Please note is the way the diocese every week keeps us up to date with what's going on, what's happened, and what's going to be happening. And particularly in this, this time where we don't get together physically as much, this is a really good way to have a sense of what the diocese is doing, how it may impact us, and, and to keep up with what Bishop Sam and Bishop Ann are doing in, in their work with the diocese and with their canons and other missioners. So, on the diocesan website, communications, subscribe, please note. Let me encourage you to do that. Um, secondly, on November the 21st, which is a Saturday, it's the Saturday before Thanksgiving, which was the original date for diocesan council, diocesan convention. Um, because we're not having that, what the diocese is going to do is gather by Zoom and have a virtual celebration of the diocese, our life and work together, how we're doing, what's going on, um, what people are learning in this pandemic context. Um, I think it's going to be a, a good time to, to connect in a new and different way around the diocese. And I encourage you to mark your calendars Saturday, November the 21st, more details will be coming. Another way to keep up with details about convention is on Please Note. So that's another reason to subscribe to Please Note. Um, but do mark your calendars for November 21st. You know, the nice thing about the Zoom gathering is you can come when you get there and you can leave when you want. So uh, it's not like we have to get in the car and go to Winston-Salem. So November 21st, diocesan celebration.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare our hearts and mind to worship him, let us pause in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Page 80 in the prayer book. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Let us pray together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. The portion of Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 70 found on page 682 of the prayer book, page 682. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me turn back because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God, you are my helper and my deliverer. O oh Lord, do not tarry. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom is radiant and unfading and she is easily discerned by those who love her and is found by those who seek her. 
She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one thought on her is perfect understanding. And one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care. Because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. The word of the Lord. Let us pray together Canticle 13, a song of praise. In the prayer book on page 90, Canticle 13. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others who, who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who, have left, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Let us now pray Canticle 19. Canticle 19 on page 94 in the prayer book, The Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish said to the wise, 
Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And they went to buy it. While the bridegroom came, and those who were all ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together Canticle 20 on page 94 in the prayer book. Canticle 20. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us now together renew our baptismal vows. Page 292 in the prayer book. Page 292. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord. <clears throat> and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live and say. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for peace in our streets. O oh Lord, in this time of protests and plague, our cities and towns struggle to recover. Let, Let there be peace in our streets. Parents are desperate to keep their kids safe. Let there be peace in our streets. Millions are out of work and have no income. 
Let there be peace in our streets. Frustrations are constant and fear is close at hand. Let there be peace in our streets. The people need justice, O Lord. The blood of victims cries out. Let us see justice in our streets. Calm our tempers, ease our fears, keep our most vulnerable safe. Let us make safety in our streets. Teach us forbearance, tolerance, and forgiveness. Let there be honesty in our country and our hearts. Help us put away our hatred and weapons. Let there be peace in our streets. Teach us, O God, to follow our Savior. Let there be peace in our streets. Amen. Let us pray for peace among the nations. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray for sound government. O Lord, our governor, bless the leaders of our land, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to other nations of the earth. Lord, Keep this nation under your care. To the president, to the president-elect, and members of the cabinet, to governors of states, mayors of cities, and to all in administrative authority, grant wisdom and grace in the exercise of their duties. Give, Give grace. grace to your servants, O Lord. To senators and representatives, returning to Washington and newly elected, and those who make our laws in states, cities, and towns, those both returning and those who are newly elected, give courage, wisdom, and foresight to provide for the needs of all our people and to fulfill our obligations in the community of nations. Give grace to your servants, O Lord. To judges and officers of our courts, both returning and newly elected, give understanding and integrity that human rights may be safeguarded and justice may be served. Give grace to your servants, O Lord. And finally, teach our people to rely on your strength and to accept their responsibilities to their fellow citizens, that they may elect trustworthy leaders and make wise decisions for the well-being of our society, that we may serve you faithfully in our generation and honor your holy name. For yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. O God, our heavenly Father, you have blessed us and given us dominion over all the earth. Increase our reverence before the mystery of life and give us new insight into your purposes for the human race and new wisdom and determination in making provision for its future in accordance with your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our diocese. O oh God, by your grace, you have called us in this diocese to a goodly fellowship of faith. Bless our bishops, Samuel, our diocesan, and Anne, our suffragan, and all other clergy, and all our people. Grant that your word may be truly preached and truly heard, your sacraments faithfully administered and faithfully received. By your spirit, fashion our lives according to the example of your Son, and grant that we may show the power of your love to all among whom we live, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the unemployed. Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work. Guide the people of this land to use their public and private wealth 
that all may find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive just payment for their labor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who influence public opinion. Almighty God, you proclaim your truth in every age by many voices. Direct in our time, we pray, those who speak where many listen and write what many read, that they may do their part in making the heart of this people wise, its mind sound, and its will righteous. To the honor of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who have died in this pandemic and for those who have died because of the brokenness of this world. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servants with thy saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. For thou only art immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and unto earth shall we return. For so thou didst ordain when thou createst me, saying, Thus thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. All we go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servants with thy saints, where sorrow and pain are no more neither sign but life everlasting. Let us pray for those serving in the front line of the pandemic. Gracious God, who is always present and active in, through, and around us, be present with those who serve during this pandemic on the front lines for the welfare and benefit of your beloved throughout the world. Doctors, nurses, all medical personnel, first responders, those who work in essential businesses, government workers in local, state, and federal offices, those who exercise leadership in our churches, all teachers, administrators, and staff in our schools, colleges, and universities, and all others who put themselves at risk for the welfare, safety, and benefit of your beloved throughout the world each day. Bless them, guide them, protect them, that in this time of trial they may be sustained with courage and wisdom and compassion in the work they do. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I bid your prayers and intercessions and thanksgivings And we remember especially those who have asked us to remember them in our hearts this day before the Lord. Parker, Tish, Cheryl, Sandra, Kathy, Bo, Diane, Liz, Judy, Daffy, Janet, Mary Jane, Steve, Dan, Andrea, and Sam, Bill and Hazel, Anne, Mary Beth and Bill, June, Dan, Elizabeth Ann and their family, the Saxon family, Doug and Robin, Brother Stephen, Stan. For those who serve in the military, Michael, Claire, Daniel, Ben, Forrest, Jonathan, and Hunter. I bid your prayers also for the repose of the soul of Jackie White and Glenn Ross. May their souls rest in peace and rise in glory. We remember also their families as they mourn their death.
Lord, you hear the prayers of your people. What we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now give thanks. Page 837 in the prayer book, a litany of thanksgiving. Page 837 in the prayer book. Let us give thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women revealing the image of Christ. We thank you, Lord. For our daily food and work our homes and families and our friends. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord. For health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places. We thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's not possible today to come together to worship God and to say our prayers without being mindful of the week this nation has experienced. As far as we know, we have an election. As far as we know, there will be a transition from the 45th president to the 46th president. And we are hoping that it will be an orderly and peaceful transition of power, which has marked the transitions of this country from the beginning and which is a deeply embedded part of the process and identity of this country as a democracy. It's impossible to come to God today without a huge sense of anxiety, which has been lessened for some and increased for others. The anxiety is still there. And we just need to name that. It's part of the truth. It's part of the reality of this moment. It's a time when indeed the reading from wisdom is especially appropriate. 
Wisdom is not simply about knowing lots of stuff. Wisdom is not really about being smart. Wisdom is not merely thinking. Wisdom is thinking and feeling and intuition and knowledge, light, patience, insight, carefulness that's strong and bold. Wisdom is about willingness to be adventuresome and discerning who we trust, how we're willing to be in the world. Wisdom is not an elusive kind of catch me if you can. Scripture says wisdom just sort of hangs around all the time and is there whenever we give wisdom an opening. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. Wisdom comes from weaving together and for us as Christians prayerfully weaving together and discerning together in the spirit the way that God is calling us to see and to respond to love to work to be faithful in the living of our baptismal vows, in following Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, in proclaiming the gospel, not as a gospel of judgment, but as a gospel of challenge, not as a gospel of impossible goals and a standard way too high, but as a gospel of the possibilities and the realities in who we are at this time in this place. Wisdom gives us hope and nurtures that hope with open heart, open mind, open spirit, open eyes, and open will. Wisdom, in that sense, then is really a way in which God the Holy Spirit comes and not only is around us or beside us, but within us. Wisdom opens up the way to see God, to know God, to respond to God in our life in this time, in this place, to participate in God and God to participate in us. Wisdom then is the foundation by which we as faithful Christian people look forward into the future, by which we act in the present, by which we build constructively and creatively the new forward and taking with us the very best, the most noble, the most effective, the most honored of our past. Wisdom is God's gift to us locally and nationally in this moment. For this is a moment in our lives, a life that in the last eight or nine months has become 
topsy-turvy, completely changed, both because of the pandemic and because it's an election year, because of unemployment, because of illness, because of uncertainty. It's been a roller coaster ride. And wisdom is God's gift to us to take charge of the roller coaster and not just be yanked around by the circumstances of our current life, life situation, our current contexts. Wisdom is the capacity not only to see, but discern the way to act. Wisdom is not only the way to gather the knowledge we need and create the tools we need to implement the knowledge. Wisdom gives us the vision to see the larger picture, the big picture, in which how we act and how we build forward. We'll care for God's people. We'll do God's work among God's beloved. And that's not simply a political question or a philosophical question or a religious question. It's all of those things. Wisdom doesn't see with just one lens. Wisdom does not see only one way. Wisdom does not act as if the only choices are A or B. Wisdom does not sit still because we've never done it that way. Wisdom does not freeze because we've never been in this place before. Wisdom is the power and the capacity that God gives us to do the needful thing in the best, most creative, life-giving way possible. Wisdom sees A and B and C and D and the unknown possibilities. Wisdom is willing to draw from all of them. Wisdom is willing to use all of them in different places with different people. This is a moment when God's gift of wisdom is of great essential importance for all of us. Wisdom is going to be the dynamic of God's spirit within us. God's spirit above us to bless us. God's spirit behind us to protect us, beneath us to support us, and before us to show us the way to be the light that brings us out of the apparent darkness and the real darkness in which we find ourselves in this day. I do not believe, and there's no scriptural evidence, nor is there evidence that I know of in the, the tradition, that God wishes for us to dwell in darkness and stay stuck there. And so God comes in the light of wisdom, the light of the Spirit, working in us the way forward, carefully discerned, faithfully enacted, gloriously embodied in God's people. This is a moment for wisdom. This is a moment for wisdom which empowers us to build forward with newness, with hope, with tradition, with courage, and with effectiveness. And so what do we do practically? What do we do in our place with these people where we find ourselves now? I walk with a friend most mornings in Salisbury, 
and in addition to solving all the problems of the world. We talk about a number of things, and we were talking about, well, what do we do now, yesterday? And I didn't have a ready answer, but it set me to thinking. And I think the first most important thing that can be done is that we begin to have the needful conversations that connect us as real human beings, one for another. And that's a little dicey in this time, so we're going to have to be clever and creative, but we've got to have the conversations. And the conversations are not with people who think like we do, but people who are different from us. I think probably one of the most important questions in that conversation is to listen to all of the people who have been so angry and so bitter. What can we do to give you relief? What can we do to affirm your value, your importance? What can we do, Christians, to affirm that we see in the other the image and likeness of God? Is it health care? Is it education? Is it power? What is it? What do you need in order to be whole? And then we need to begin to work on ways in which we respond. We need to work on ways coming out of the conversations, which hopefully will be a beginning of trust building, to build trust. For without trust, nothing's going to change. Without trusting one another, wisdom will be shut out because we can't see each other except as the enemy. Do unto others before they do to you has got to become do unto others as we would have them do to us. How do we do that? We don't have to have all the answers right away. But we need to begin to build a culture and society in which the conversation can begin, in which the trust can be built in which the wisdom of light can shine, can empower, and to help us move forward. And that's where the gospel is important today. The gospel is about having the equipment knowing how to use it, and being ready. And if any one of those three things are missing, we can miss the opportunity. That's Jesus' message in be ready. Have your equipment. Have your lamp. Have your oil. Know how to use it. Have it trimmed and ready. And then be ready when the moment comes. Because that is when the light of wisdom sets us free into that moment to do the work of that moment together. Whether it's a conversation, whether it's a project, whether it's about improving educational systems and making them more equal and accessible, or health care that becomes more accessible and affordable, or a political structure that is more participa participating for everybody. It doesn't matter where we start with wisdom. The question is, will we start? Will we take the risk? 
Will we come into the light that opens to us the infinite possibilities that God is planning for us? It is as the prophet Jeremiah said, do you not know that I have a plan for you, a plan that is good for you and will not harm you? And wisdom lights the way to the plan. Being ready and willing and able positions us to receive the light and live into it. This is a moment for wisdom, individually, locally, and nationally. This is a moment for wisdom. The time is now. God is giving us the equipment. Are we ready and are we willing to go into that light for the sake of all of God's beloved? Amen. Let us pray for our country. God of our fathers, whose almighty hand leads forth in beauty all the story band of shining worlds in splendor through the skies, our grateful songs before thy throne arise. Refresh thy people on their toilsome way Lead us from night to never-ending day. Fill all our lives with love and grace divine. And glory, laud, and praise be ever thine. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.